Hey everyone, John Grimsmo here. Today we're going to work on a quick and dirty project, fixing one of my knives. Um, this is a new one that we just finished. Beautiful purple honeycomb with a damn steel blade. Turned out awesome. This is going to Latham. However, you know, we made a little tiny mistake on it. When I was doing the this hole for the thumb stud, for the screw head, I think I had a tool offset wrong or something, and this happened on, I think, two blades. So when I put the screw head in, there we go, um, it goes in too far. So the screw head should be flush right there, but it's, uh, it's sunk down about 30 thousandths of an inch. Not the end of the world, but also not ideal. How do we fix this? Let's make a titanium spacer on the Tormac lathe that'll go underneath the screw head and preferably kind of shove in there so it stays in there. And then uh, nobody will notice, as long as the owner doesn't watch this video, which he probably will. But, you know, minor little tweak like that to fix a problem and make this knife 100% perfect instead of 98% perfect. So let's go to the lathe and do this. All right, so the first step is to get rid of all the junk that's been piling up on the lathe because I haven't run it in a week or two. Um, I bought some uh, 3 16 titanium rod, 6AL4V. So I have plenty. Um, the final diameter needs to be 0.181, and this is 187. So I just need to kiss the outside diameter, drill a hole, and part it off. Make it about 30 thousandths thick, and then we're good to go. Because this hole is a milled hole, it's not always exactly the diameter that I want it to be, that it's supposed to be. So just to be absolutely sure what diameter I want it to be, I've got my gauge pin set here. And I think it's going to be 0.183. Yeah, 183 fits in there perfectly, and it'll need a little shove to get it all the way to the bottom. So if I make my spacer 183 diameter, then uh, it should be perfect. I've got one of Tormac's ER16 collets, collet holders, ER16 collet for 8th inch drill bit and an 8th inch HSS CO cobalt drill bit. Fairly fresh. It's got some use to it, but it still looks sharp enough. You can tell if you look just right at the center and see how the light shines off of it. Um, oftentimes I'll use a loop if I really want to get in close and just look right at it. Um, and that way I can see if it's worn out, if it's chipped, if it's dull. This one looks a little bit dull, but it'll, it'll be fine for one hole. Although I will say that with titanium, you do not really want to use dull drill bits because it will melt itself and work hard in that piece and kill your drill bit. And yeah, so sharp drill bits are really good for titanium, almost required. We're all set up here. Pardon the background noise. Eric's got the uh, Tormac surface grinder running and he's grinding on the grinder right over there. Busy, busy. All right, so the stock is ugly. So we have to cut the end of that off. And it's it was cut with an abrasive saw, so it's probably a little work hardened and nasty. So I'm gonna chop that off and then we can get working here. So I got my eighth inch drill bit here. I've got just a CCMT turning tool here and my Nicole grooving insert right there. This is the tapered insert, so it should leave a pretty clean cut. For a quick and dirty job like this, it's not even worth it to write CNC code. I'm just gonna jog the axis by hand and uh, make it happen that way. easier to watch the screen while I do this. Now this tool is not uh, centered, so if you'll notice it leaves a nub on the end. Um, not a big deal because I use this as a roughing tool, but it's also not perfect. So I'm going to take a little bit more off. Switch to tool five. Which is this one. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to face face the end off with this tool so that I have an accurate, so I can measure an exact 30 thou using this tool. Not bad. Let's do it again. Pretty nice. So now in the computer. Um, in the computer, I'm going to call this position zero because that's where I am right now. So I'm going to zero the Z. And then what's next? Uh, and then I'm just going to take the drill bit in there and poke a hole through the middle pretty deep. And then I'm going to turn the diameter down so it's 180. See, this is interesting because I, I don't know if this tool is exactly concentric right now, and you can watch it walk its way in. See how it goes up just a little bit. Looking pretty good, that's a sharp tool. I'm totally just guessing and eyeballing on how deep to go here. I don't really care. I don't want to go too deep in one pass, otherwise, with no cooling. Otherwise, it could overheat. I'm sure that's plenty deep. take this tool and you got to watch out for clearance on this guy See what the diameter that is, and then I'll tweak it from there. So unfortunately, this measures 1811, but I need it to be 183. So that sucks, so I just scrapped it basically. My first cut, my first test cut was too heavy, so I need to, you know, this is the first time I run the machine for the day, I haven't, I haven't zeroed it in properly. Um, so that's why this happened. That's okay, I'll just cut it off and then uh, pull it out a little bit, start a new one. Now I know how to do it. So I just ran out of memory space on my, my camera card here, and I was thinking to myself, but I just emptied it the other day, why is it full? Uh, I looked at it and it turns out my son had filmed about an hour and a half of carpet while playing with the camera. So once I deleted that, there's plenty of space now. Alright, let's try this again. I reset the offset based on the 1811 diameter and it should cut really accurate now. Um, and actually to test that, before I get rid of this piece, maybe I'll do another cut. Maybe call it 1800 and then uh, measure the actual diameter and we'll compare. I'm gonna go even smaller actually, I'll go 1875. No, one, um, 178, uh, whatever, I'll do something. 177. Bit better.
1774, so I'm four tenths too big. One more offset change and then we're totally accurate. Deep, that's plenty deep. Face off the end again just to make it sure it's perfect. So now I'm back to this tool, which is tool six. And if I make it 0 0.1830, it should be within a few tenths of that. Just watching for clearance with that bottom tool. This is plenty deep enough. Just go back. Ideally, I would retract out, but it doesn't really matter. And then... So I just went ahead and measured the width of this cutting tool and it's 0.0586. So smaller than the 0625 it's supposed to be, but that means if I want the spacer to be 30 thousandths, I need to go 30 thousandths plus the width of the tool, 0586, which is whatever math says that is, 0.8 something. And then if I cut it off, it should be a 30 thousandths thick spacer. All right, it turns out that's obviously 0.0886. And it looks about right, so if I'm just going to turn the spindle back on and cut it off. Now this is a tapered cutter, you can see it right there, so it's going to leave a pretty clean cut. And I'm just going to go real slow. There it goes. Dang. That is awesome. You can see there's a little burr on the far inside edge. I'm not sure which side that's from, from the inside or the outside when I cut it off, but that's pretty cool. I think it'll work just perfectly for my my purpose um, as is, so let's test fit. <laughs> just got a nice butt shot of you there. How's that for tolerance right in front of Eric's crack? Um, 0303, so I'm 3 tenths oversized, big freaking whoop. You know, if I was super crazy, I would uh, make another one and make it exactly 0300, but I don't really care. And then if I measure with the burr, uh, it's 0309, so it's only a few tenths bigger with that burr, not a big deal. Love it! Ah, I dropped it! Lost it forever! dropped it. It's gotta be here somewhere. Hmm. Oh, oh, there it is. Boom. That wasn't too hard. The camera helped. Where did I put it? I thought I put it right here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's so small. That's what she said. I knew you were going to say that's what she said. It's snug so far. It's not falling in like I hoped it would. It might have a little burr on the outside diameter. Yeah, it does have a little burr on the outside diameter. Of one side. Yeah, if it wasn't for that burr, um, it slips in perfectly. So I might be able to kind of squish it down, because I don't need it to come out again. But if I do squish it down, I don't think I'll be able to get it out again, so I have to be careful. It'll work fine. Oh yeah, this will be fine, I think. Kind of pushing it in with the screw head. I need to go more because it's not even coming out. I hope I didn't ruin this there. I'm 
got it. See now the screw head is super flush. Looks good. Thread stick out. Not a lot, but just enough. Could be a bit more actually. But yeah, thumb stud goes on the other side. We're good to go. And then when you pull the screw out, you pretty much cannot tell that there's an insert in there. Nobody would ever notice it unless they were told. Come on, focus. Yeah, you can kind of see a double lip on the inside there, but only if you absolutely know what you're looking for. Sweet, problem solved. So that is how you make a quick and dirty spacer on the Tormac lathe. And I just want to reiterate that I did all of that without any any code, any CNC. I just used the jog pendant and kind of zipping around. And then I would put in a different tool number for each tool so that I could use accurate uh, dimensions here and there. So like this one's tool five, this one's tool six, and then the drill bit I called tool nine. And that's all there is to it. I mean, it's just kind of farting around. And if I were to make this part in production, I would just code exactly what I did. Maybe put a few chamfers in there, and uh, it'd be easy. And I could do several of them before having to pull the bar out again, because they're so thin. There's a lot of fun lathe projects coming up out of, the, out of this machine, so got some cool things in mind. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.